Now this right here is a story that deserves a lot of attention because we've been keeping up with it day by day since the news broke that Luis Ortiz was in the running for an Anthony Joshua fight and that reportedly an offer was made. Get a load of this. Luis Ortiz fully understands the public outrage over his team not managing to secure and deal as a late replacement to face unbeaten unified heavyweight titleist Anthony Joshua. That's because he and those closest to him are just as frustrated, if not more so. Everything about the way all this was handled was a mess. Herman Saicedo, Ortiz's career-long trainer, told BoxingScene.com of his client losing out for the moment on a career-changing payday. It's how it played out. And it is what it is. Everyone had a little truth in everything that's been said, and a lot of things that aren't quite true. He went on to say, So I'm reading that Lewis was on quote-unquote holiday or vacation, that Jay initially told Eddie that Luis wasn't ready, which I don't know why he would, notes Saicedo. Unless a vacation for Luis means spending time in a different part of the gym, I don't know where anyone got that information from. His kids are in school. Where the hell is he going to go by himself? The only time he took off is when I had to force him to take a staycation around Easter when his kids had a break from school. Even then, he was still at the track every morning like he always is. He's still jumping rope every day. He's always training. He's always ready for a fight for Joshua. Sure, we'd love an 8-12 to 12 week camp, but we could get ready in five if the fight was signed today. He went on to say that an opportunity like this to make whatever Eddie is offering, seven, eight million, you grab it, Saicedo notes. I think it was a rookie mistake on their part to not accept the fight. Luis is still pissed off. He found out when everyone else found out. But having said that, Eddie offering it and then putting it in writing are two different things. I personally believe that we would have seen an upside down contract just to stall and renegotiate. Most fighters won't take a fight until they have signed the contract. There's a lot of things you can do with a contract to make a fight not happen. Still. The frustrating part on Ortiz's end is that his quote-unquote promoter not even allowing talks to reach that point. Oh. I'm upset that they didn't consult me more than they did and that they didn't take my opinion to heart, oh. admits Saicedo. I'm around Luis every day. If we're saying we're ready, take the money and fight, you accept the fucking offer and make Eddie show you a contract. Now I want to preface everything I'm about to say with this. Here on Ring IQ Boxing Talk, The Relay, I myself feel that we have an obligation to report the news as it is, not as we want it to be. So that means that if there are new developments and there are new details that are made available, we have to acknowledge those details. We have to realign our perceptions, regardless of what they were, to what they should be, based on the facts. And the fact of the matter is that Luis Ortiz's trainer is sitting here today saying that if there was a dialogue, between Jay Jimenez and Eddie Hearn, it's a dialogue that Luis Ortiz wasn't even privy to, a dialogue that he wasn't even a part of. And that had he been a part of that dialogue, along with his trainer, Things might have progressed. that talks might have been moving forward, that they would have at least got to the point to where they're seeing something in writing, whereas it never got to that point due to the actions of Jay Jimenez. Now, there are some very, very serious implications in association with that bit of news. That if Jay Jimenez has somehow thrown the monkey wrench in the Luis Ortiz versus Anthony Joshua negotiations... Why the fuck would he do that? We have to ask why. Why would Jay Jimenez make such a snap judgment on what is such a big opportunity for his client? And why would he make such a decision without consulting his client and his trainer first? What could and what would compel Jay Jimenez to make such a snap judgment regarding what would be a career-altering fight for life-changing money in regards to his client. Why would he make a snap judgment like that without consulting him first? Who's working for who here? What are you saying? Essentially, what Luis Ortiz's trainer is saying is that Luis Ortiz and his trainer were completely oblivious to all of this. They didn't know. They weren't consulted. They were not made aware. In other words, this information was being omitted from them. And this fuels a lot of the speculations, a lot of the rumors, a, a lot of the kind of talk that's been going around that offers are being made for certain fighters on the PBC side of the street, but those fighters are not being made aware of those offers, of what those dollar amounts actually are. This further fuels that conversation. Now, in my previous videos where I discussed this matter in great detail, one of these scenarios I presented, and I will admit that I only presented it in passing, is that maybe this is a fight that Luis Ortiz might want, and it's his team 
what now appears to be at least one member of it that doesn't want that fight for him. And the question then becomes why? What would compel a member of Luis Ortiz's team to sabotage this situation? You know, it's not like Luis's trainer doesn't have his own reservations in regards to Eddie Hearn, in regards to what could have happened, you know, when they asked to see something in writing. It's not like he doesn't have his own reservations. He does. But essentially what he's saying is it never actually got to that point to where you'd get to find out if it's a serious offer because Jay Jimenez seems to have shut that down all before it even got to that point. So there's a really big question mark as to why he would do that and what would compel him to do that. And I dare say, and this is just one man's opinion, feel free to disagree, but I'm of the opinion that this is the work of Al Heyman. Oh this is the work of Al Heyman. That perhaps when Jay Jimenez got that offer from Eddie Hearn, when he got the call, he got off the phone with Eddie and picked up the phone again to call Al. And he made Al aware of what's going on and Al told him to decline that offer. Oh my God. That under the instruction of Al Heyman and his plan for Deontay Wilder, he will not accept Luis Ortiz crossing any streets to fight anyone because what he intends to do, what he may intend to do, is to stage a rematch between Deontay Wilder and Luis Ortiz and he wants to keep Luis on that side of the street. That a rematch with Deontay Wilder and Luis Ortiz, a rematch that Luis Ortiz has been supposedly promised, Arcon. okay? That rematch is a focal point, a part of a plan that they have in play for their fighter. Their fighters. And that plan could be hampered if Luis Ortiz goes to risk it all against Anthony Joshua for Buku dollars. That at the cost of Luis's bank account, basically, at the cost of Luis Ortiz's bank account, Al Heyman might have sabotaged that fight so that he'll still be there for a Deontay Wilder rematch. Makes sense. Makes sense. I mean, Makes I can't sense. think of too many other explanations as to why Jay Jimenez himself, of his own volition, independently, would try to sabotage the fight. I can't think of a good reason why Jay Jimenez just by himself would shoot down an offer of that size for his own guy. For his guy. His fighter. I, 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 I can't figure. This is why I said it's foolhardy. This is why Luis Ortiz has come under fire from a lot of people in the boxing community because it just doesn't make sense. It reads as a very foolhardy and greedy move. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and that mm -hmm. given how vocal Luis Ortiz and his trainer have been the last couple of weeks, months, year or so, in regards to an Anthony Joshua fight and how much they want that fight, that given how much they've advocated to the media in the public eye to get that fight, for them to turn around and shoot down this offer, it just doesn't make sense. And you know what? It appears that where it didn't make sense to us, it didn't make sense to Luis Ortiz and his trainer either. They looked at the situation the way that we looked at the situation. They understand why they're coming under fire and they feel that the situation was mismanaged. The question is why? Why would Jay Jimenez shoot down an offer like that? Makes absolutely no sense. Why would he choose to omit this information from Luis Ortiz? Why did Luis Ortiz find out when we found out? I mean, essentially, your promoters, you know, he's, he's, he's supposed to let you know, right? I mean, if you're going to have the inside track on anyone's career, you would think it were your own. But it appears that even Luis Ortiz doesn't have the inside track on Luis Ortiz. Ortiz. And it's because his quote-unquote promoter, as Ortiz's trainer put it, his quote-unquote promoter appears to have omitted that information. There are only so many inferences and so many conclusions that you can draw from the promoter omitting information from the fighter. And how that relates to the bigger picture, the banner that they fight under. It's not a secret that Luis Ortiz and his trainer have been saying they've been promised a Deontay Wilder rematch. And to make sure that that rematch comes off, they may have just costed Luis Ortiz the opportunity and the kind of money that he was looking for. Wow. The wonderful Al Heyman may be the one to blame for this. Now, I realize that Al Heyman's role, as stated... And what I'm saying... This is a speculation that I have. I'm trying to understand why Jay Jimenez would do what he did. Because he doesn't stand to gain anything from that. How would turning down that fight benefit Jay Jimenez? It wouldn't. That's the question. I mean, if he's operating by himself, then what does he stand to benefit from that? I don't know! In what capacity would he benefit from that? He wouldn't, but you know who would? Al Heyman would, because that keeps Ortiz on that side of the street. Al Heyman, he is the dad body, he will destroy us, destroy the boxing. Now as this pertains to the fans, my fellow YouTubers out there who don't share my opinion, that 
I'm of the opinion that this is a fantastic offer for Luis Ortiz, where there are some others out there that would have you believe that this is a quote-unquote low ball. Oh, really? Well, Luis Ortiz doesn't think it's a low ball. He himself doesn't think it's a low ball, and neither does his trainer. Yeah. So why do you think that? How do you resolve that? That the fighter himself doesn't think it's a low ball, so why do you think it's a low ball? <laughs> Why were there people out there saying that Luis Ortiz was right to turn down the offer when come to find out, he ain't even the one that turned it down because he didn't know the offer was made. He found out when we found out. But you guys, you guys are the guys that are saying that he was right to turn it down. Well, he didn't turn it down and he doesn't think it's a low ball. So how do you resolve your logic? How do you resolve your agenda? Because that's what it is. It's an agenda. In one of my previous videos, I talked about how Anyone who thinks that Luis Ortiz should turn this offer down is not operating in his best interests or the interests of his family because he's a family man. And what Luis Ortiz is, is a fighter in his late 30s who's in a very brutal sport. A sport that he may not be able to participate in for much longer. So this kind of a payday could set him up for what is the rest of his life. Yet there are people out there that think it's okay for a guy in his late 30s in the sport of boxing to play the waiting game when there is a multi-million dollar payday on the table here today. But you guys are saying, nah, he should turn it down because that's not enough money. That's a low ball. Ortiz don't think it's a low ball. So why do you think it's a low ball? Boxing has become a very strange sport as of late in this digital era where any variety of morons and shills and idiots and fucking weirdos have a platform to voice their harebrained fucking opinions that consist of little more than applesauce and chewing gum. That it's something, but it damn sure ain't the meat and potatoes. Because the meat and potatoes is, Luis Ortiz is not going to be able to compete at this level for very much longer. He's said to be in his late 30s, but it's conceivable that he's older than that, which is commonplace among Cuban defectors who lie about their age. That Ortiz might be older than what he lets on. And if he is, he can't afford to play the waiting game. Not at this stage in his career, not at this age. He's a family guy. He's a prize fighter. And he's fighting to keep the food on the table and the lights on in his house. In which case, if somebody's offering you a multi-million dollar payday to fight at Madison Square Garden in front of 17,000 fucking people, this is your moment and it behooves you to take it, win or lose. This is not a fight and an opportunity that he can afford to turn down, but there's people out there that say otherwise. Well, I'll tell you what, you're entitled to your opinion the same way I'm entitled to mine. But the difference between your opinion and my opinion is that the fighter himself seems to share my opinion that that's a great offer, that they should have been moving forward on that and that whoever turned it down dropped the ball. I'll reiterate a familiar sentiment that I expressed in one of my previous videos. That while I iterate the points that I'm making that characterize why Luis Ortiz should jump all over that offer, it's not that I'm trying to come off as the patron saint for elderly boxers or anything like that. It's not that I'm trying to come off as the patron saint for Luis Ortiz's family or family guys in the sport of boxing. It's not like that. It's not about what I think. It's about what makes sense ladies and gentlemen and anyone operating in the best interest of their fighter given Luis Ortiz's unique set of circumstances it would make absolutely no sense for him to walk away from an opportunity like that and anyone who would advise him to do it or work clandestinely so that that opportunity passes by well that's someone who's not working in the best interest of that fighter point blank period that if that's what's going on, it would have to be to service some other agenda, some other purpose, poses some other service to something else, but not the fighter. It doesn't benefit Luis Ortiz to walk away from that opportunity. You know, you ain't gotta be Tally Savalas, Columbo, Inspector Gadget, or McGruff the crime dog. Put it together. To understand what's going on here and who actually would benefit from sabotaging that fight. Who would want to stop that fight and why? Now, it ain't Ortiz. Ortiz seems to be on board. Like, he seems to want the fight, apparently. So then who wouldn't want the fight? Somebody who might need Ortiz. Somebody who might need Ortiz to be around because Ortiz has a role to play in a bigger picture where Deontay Wilder is the focal point. And Ortiz might have, you know, his role in that. They got to preserve that guy. They got to keep that guy around. But just as well, you don't want Luis Ortiz going over there to the DAZN side of the street drumming up interest and drumming up business for Anthony Joshua. 
You don't want that to happen because that might help Anthony Joshua gain momentum in the American market. If he takes on what is Deontay Wilder's crown jewel on his entire resume, and by some chance he were to flatten him, what does that do for Wilder's stock? This is the best guy that you fought. You went life or death with this guy. Great fight, very entertaining. But we saw Wilder struggle significantly in that fight. So what happens if Anthony Joshua goes in there with the same fucking guy that had Wilder on Queer Street, but Joshua don't struggle with him? Joshua flattens him. Oh, I know that hardcores like me and you can relegate things to styles making fights, but that's not how the casuals view boxing. The casuals are going to look at something like that and say, hey, that Anthony Joshua guy, he's all fucking right. He, he just beat the guy that damn near knocked out Wilder. Who would want to stop a situation like that from happening? What name pops into your minds, ladies and gentlemen? Don't kid yourselves and don't be naive. We know what name it is. And we, and we know why they would want to prevent that from happening. Not just to preserve Ortiz so that he's still around for Wilder, but to stop Anthony Joshua from having a successful American debut. Who would want to stop that from happening? Y'all know who. Y'all know who.